Hi everyone, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple Dialog Pathology. In this tutorial, I will be talking about uh, actinomycosis. This is uh, particularly relevant to the undergraduate students in pathology. Right. So I'll be discussing the practical aspects. I'll be, you know, helping you to understand the slide of actinomycosis as to how it looks under the microscope. So actinomycosis is a chronic suppurative granulomatous inflammation, which is caused by actinomyces israeli. It's an endogenous infection. Basically, actinomyces israeli is a filamentous gram positive organism of the genus actinobacteria right it is a normal commensal in humans in the oral cavity the lower gastrointestinal tract and the female genital tract this disease occurs worldwide but it is often seen in tropical regions such as asia africa central and south america okay now let us understand another terminology which is referred to as mycetoma mycetoma is a chronic granulomatous disease of the skin and subcutaneous tissue typically affecting the lower extremities, predominantly occurs in farm workers. So mycetoma can be caused by fungi, it can be caused by bacteria. When it, bacteria, for example, actinomycetes group. If it is caused by fungi or fungi, it is referred to as mycotic mycetoma or eumycetoma. If it is caused by bacteria of actinomycetes group, it is called actinomycetoma or actinomycotic mycetoma. Okay, so don't get confused with actinomycosis. Actinomycosis and actinomycetoma are different entities. Actinomycosis is an endogenous infection, whereas actinomycetoma is a chronic granulomatous disease affecting the skin and subcutaneous tissue, particularly extremities. Now let us move on to understand the concepts of actinomycosis. What are the clinical clinical features of actinomycosis? The clinical features depends on the site of infection. Actinomycosis is categorized into cervicofacial actinomycosis, thoracic or respiratory actinomycosis, abdominal actinomycosis, and pelvic actinomycosis. What is the cervicofacial actinomycosis? It is often a sequel to periodontal disease. You know, it could be oral mucosal injury or dental caries. Initially, these lesions are localized, but then when it enlarges, you know, it forms abscesses and then there will be draining, discharging sinus tracts, okay, through which these sulfur granules will be extruded. The sulfur granules, uh, the name sulfur granules are given because they are yellowish in color, white to yellowish in color, which is a color of a sulfur. That's why the name sulfur granules, okay. We will talk about what these sulfur granules are made up of a bit later. Now, thoracic or respiratory actinomycosis is usually as a result of aspiration of the infected material. Whereas abdominal actinomycosis is always, almost always a secondary complication or extension of thoracic infection. The common site of abdominal actinomycosis being appendix, cecum and liver. The last being the pelvic actinomycosis occurs as a complication of intrauterine contraceptive devices. Rarely, actinomycosis can also involve joints, skin and central nervous system. So clinically, we know that it is either a lumpy jaw or a discharging sinus. On microscopy, what do you see? On microscopically, microscopically, typically, you know, you see sulfur granules are evident in the midst of separative inflammation. We will talk about what these sulfur granules are, okay? The sulfur granules are actually a conglomeration of filamentous gram-positive bacilli, which is actinomyces israeli, which are trapped in a biofilm-like material. Okay, these are seen in the center of separative inflammation. That means in the center of inflammatory cells, which are predominantly neutrophils. These bacilli are bordered by eosinophilic amorphous material with a club-shaped configuration and that is called a splendor hopley phenomena, splendor hopley reaction. So this is an illustrated image showing actinomycosis. This is a central sulfur granule on microscopy. It's basically composed of masses of gram-positive bacteria with branching filaments. Okay, look at the periphery. The periphery is eosinophilic, amorphous, club-shaped configuration surrounding the granule. That is splendor hopefully reaction. So as I told you, these granules are seen in the midst of dense suppurative inflammation. So all the cells surrounding the granule are neutrophils. 
okay yes in chronic stages you do find lymphohistiocytic infiltrate sometimes even you can find multinucleated giant cells so this is the lower uh, power view of actor mycosis where you can see sulfur granules okay these are sulfur granules on microscopy which are nothing but the conglomeration of filamentous gram positive bacilli surrounded by dense inflammatory cell infiltrates the higher magnification showing the granule the spender hopley phenomenon lots of neutrophils lymphohistiocytes and then multinucleated giant cells so the again higher magnification showing a sulfur granule surrounded by dense inflammatory cell infiltrates how do you treat these patients usually antimicrobial therapy with penicillin or amoxicillin is a treatment of choice yes surgical management can be uh, may be required for drainage of abscesses so let me explain uh, the microscopy of actinomycosis once again by this virtual slide okay look at this this is a virtual slide uh, biopsy taken from an actinomycotic or discharging uh, sinuses can you make out that these are sulfur granules which were grossly evident basically they are as i told you conglomeration of gram positive filamentous bacteria okay look at this can you make out the inflammatory cells surrounding the bacteria dense neutrophilic and lymphocytic infiltrate so this is how a microscopy of actinomycosis looks like okay identify these sulfur granules which are basically masses of bacteria in the center of inflammatory infiltrate and that is suppurative inflammation suppurative inflammation means dense neutrophilic infiltration of course you can find lymphohistiocytic infiltration as well surrounding the suppurative inflammatory foci so that's all about the microscopy of actinomycosis thank you for watching if you have liked this video please hit the like button do comment do subscribe because i'll be coming out with many more uh, videos particularly for undergraduate students in pathology okay uh, regarding the practical pathology I, i will be covering most of the practical slides from now on Thank you.